now have a very interesting fireside chat on the topic PSUs building India's energy security. I'd request Ms. Dr. Ravi Gupta to please join us on stage. Joining Dr. Ravi Gupta, may I invite uh, Mr. Pankaj Kulshresh, Executive Director, Uttarakhand Jal Vidyut Nigam Limited. Can we have a round of applause for Mr. Pankaj Kulshetra, Executive Director, Uttarakhand Jal Vidyut Nigam Limited. Welcome, sir. And joining both of them, we have Mr. Kamal Tandon, Executive Director, Western Region, Gale India Limited. Over to you, sir. Hello, everyone. I'm Ravi Gupta. I'm CEO of Elets of Technology Media Private Limited. And on my uh, left, I'm joined by uh, Mr. Kamal Tandon, who is the executive director of the Western Region for Gale India Limited. Uh, welcome, Kamal ji. Thank you for joining us. And on my right, I have uh, with me Shri Pankaj Kulshesht, who is the executive director of Uttarakhand Jal Vidyut Nigam Limited. Uh, welcome, Pankaj ji. Uh, Today, uh, the topic of the discussion here is the PSUs, how they are building India's energy security. And uh, we have uh, two highly diverse organizations being represented here. Uh, one is from Uttarakhand, uh, which is uh, mainly focusing on the hydro energy sector. And other is the giant, which is Gale. Uh, everyone knows about uh, how Gale is uh, into like you know, uh, various uh, aspects of the uh, energy sector, and, and especially the gas sector. So let me start by asking uh, Pankaj Kulshreshchi that uh, how is Uttarakhand Jal Vidhu Sandigam uh, Limited uh, uh, making uh, new uh, initiatives in the energy sector and especially being a region which is more of a, a hilly region, what are the challenges and how your organization is converting them into opportunities? Over to you. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, really, it's a good point to discuss about all these things. First of all, I would like to thank the organizers for having me over here and uh, discussing such a relevant topic, which is quite apt in this current scenario. Uttarakhand being a hilly state, we are already generating green energy. That is in terms of hydro. In the morning, uh, somebody from Envision was talking about the hydro which creates a lot of methane. That's a GHG gas. It's true to some extent, but if the reservoir is not big, then the vegetation which is getting submerged is lesser and the GHG emissions are not that high. So whatever dams or barrages we own in Uttarakhand as UJVN Limited. Now it is known as UJVN Limited. Earlier, people used to call it as Uttarakhand Jalvidundigam Limited. And when the state's name was Uttaranchal, it was Uttaranchal Jalvidundigam Limited. So we own about uh, 1,420 odd megawatts of installed capacity in across Uttarakhand. Then we have uh, other CPSUs over there like NHPC, THDC, and the private operators also who have around uh, 4,000 megawatt total capacity, which is there in Uttarakhand. Uh, it has been a dampener after the Kedarna Dilaj in 2013. The growth has not been to that extent, which was there prior to uh, the Kedarna Dilaj. Uh, most of the environmentalists have come in the forefront, and there have been uh, petitions in the Supreme Court and at various levels, and they have been languishing. and. Uh, Ganga Basin has not been cleared as yet. A demand has been set up by our Honorable CM to the Prime Minister very recently about clearing at least the Bhagirathi and Alaknanda Basin because the Ganga forms after uh, Dev Prayag. Prior to that, it is uh, Alaknanda and uh, Bhagirathi. So we are, we are planning to have a clear roadmap of having hydro in a big way not only UJVNL as a state undertaking, but all the other CPSUs combined with the IPPs. And there are going to be some policy changes also, uh, which have been recommended to the government of India, as well as uh, we, we have the solar also to some extent. Rather, UJVNL owns about 25 odd megawatt of solar. We are still planning to have some more solar of about 
75 megawatt at various offices and powerhouse buildings. And the government of Uttarakhand has mandated uh, our company to use the other government institutions and the government land which has not been used where the solar could be installed. Uh, some canal tops uh, we have done and another canal top is being, being planned. Excellent uh, uh, presentation, uh, Pankaji, and you have highlighted uh, various aspects and including the environmental challenges you highlighted. Uh, let me request uh, Kamal Tandanji if you can highlight some of the expansion plans of Gale and how uh, uh, what are the new initiatives in terms of sustainability, if you can talk about that. Thank you so much. Uh, you have actually uh, rightly chosen the subject of the conference, which is energy security and energy transition. We have heard a lot, and that's the talk of the town these days. Well, Gail, as you all know, has been into the you know building of energy security for so many years. And uh, if you take the word average of the percentage share of all the energies, I think as a country, India has not done bad so far as far as renewables are concerned, wherein our share is close to 5%, and that's what the world average is also hovering around 5 to 6%. But we have so far not been able to do the transitioning from the share of oil and coal, which has been required very much, and that's how the share of gas has been low in our country and the transitioning as we have all heard has is a, is a long process it's not that simple it's not that easy from the refineries our colleagues have been mentioning just before this session that even oil is going to stay next 10 years 20 years so the transition is going to be a long process and i think the best bridging fuel if we see is natural gas I think that's what we all should look for because natural gas is the most clean, most effective, most efficient fuel which is, you know, contributing to the climate change, which is contributing to lesser emissions, decarbonization. And that's what the focus of Gale is. The Gale is focused towards building infrastructure so that we can use more and more of natural gas. We already have in India six terminals, LNG terminals, <coughs> and we are looking for four more LNG terminals in the country. Total I am putting together in the country, I am talking uh, for the whole nation. We have in country about uh, infrastructure, the pipeline network of close to 19 to 20,000 kilometer, out of which about 15,000 kilometer is owned by Gale. And the plan is to build another 14,000 kilometers so that we can have a total infrastructure network of 35,000 kilometers in the country. Out of this balance, 15,000 kilometers, we are owning another 5,000 kilometers in our expansion plans. In addition, for the transition towards renewables, we already have some solar projects and some wind projects in our basket and we are going to have more in the term to come time to come total about 130 megawatts capacity has already in is already in place as far as solar and wind is concerned and we are already commissioned a hydrogen blending with compressed natural gas at indoor wherein we have concluded that yes we can blend about 20% hydrogen in natural gas. We've already in the process of setting up India's largest electrolyzer, which is 10 megawatt electrolyzer, which can produce 4.3 uh, million tons per, uh, 4.3 tons per day of green hydrogen. So these are some projects wherein we are working on. And through natural gas, in fact, through the whole network of natural gas you are seeing today, 
that number of cities, number of towns are getting connected, and we are able to supply natural gas to for all our transport sector, for all our household sector too. That's what the transition is all about. Thank you, uh, Kamal ji. Uh, let me ask that: What are the um, opportunities uh, for the state like Uttar uh, and, and what are the new avenues for energy uh, sustainability and energy uh, growth or and uh, energy security, which uh, especially the Himalayan states should look at and explore? Pankaj, over to you. Definitely, there are opportunities uh, for the growth of the energy in our state. Earlier, the small hydro projects as well as the medium hydro projects were allocated to different uh, private partners for the execution of the same. But due to some problem or the other, they could not take off. So the government is planning to come out with a one-time MNST scheme. Basically, there used to be an implementation agreement in the beginning, which used to say that uh, it will be valid up to 40 years. The agreement will be valid up to 40 years from the date of signing of the implementation agreement. Because due to one reason or the other, the project could not take off and they were also not allowed to sell it off to somebody else. So even this uh, proposal is under the government's consideration so that if the independent developer to whom the project has been allocated wants to sell it to somebody else or transfer the equity to somebody else, that could be possible. Then one-time MNST scheme says that you can change the COD, that is commercial operation date, for one time, so the penalty would not be there. Then there are uh, developers who, who uh, intend to increase the capacity of the project once it was allocated at a particular megawatt capacity, they want to increase the capacity. So that increase, there was almost 65 lakh rupees per megawatt charges. Those are to be reduced to 1 lakh per megawatt. So these are the, these are the benefits which our government is considering to provide to the developers and coming out with a, a separate hydro policy so that more uh, people can pitch in from the uh, private uh, departments also and uh, contribute in increasing the energy as far as the hydro potential is concerned, which is almost of the order of 20,000 megawatt in the state of Uttarakhand, which can be, which can be taken up. The other point is that uh, UJVNL has uh, very old projects. Our youngest project was commissioned only in this year. That was 120 megawatt. And the second youngest project was commissioned 2006-07. Other projects, uh, ranges between 1950-55 to 80-81. So those are quite a old and uh, the efficiencies have really reduced. So UJVNL started with an ambitious plan of renovation, modernization and upgradation of the projects. Way back in uh, 2008 or 9, we started preparing DPR on our own, then the IIT Roodkey also helped us. We got the uh, RLA studies done, that is residual life assessment studies done. And successfully we have executed almost four or five projects, wherein the uh, generation has enhanced by almost 30 to 45 percent. Because uh, the, the, uh, the, the projects, the machines had deteriorated and the state of the art technology was not used, most of the cases spares were also not available. And uh, the equipment which were being used they were quite old and functioning very erratically. And we did the, uh, the RMU comprehensively. And uh, we could say that uh, UJVNL was the pioneer in uh, taking up the RMU. And even uh, UJVNL was uh, a part while preparing the RMU plan with CBIP. They had a, they had a manual on RMU and uh, UJVNL was a part of it. We have successfully executed few projects. At present, we are working on two, three projects where the contracts have already been awarded. And there has been a remarkable improvement in the uh, generation uh, through this area. Then uh, another, another thing is that we are not uh, leaving the associated auxiliaries uh, lagging behind. Like the dams and barrages, there is a scheme uh, by World Bank, which is getting executed through CWC, 
it's a dam rehabilitation and implementation program uh, usml is also a part of it and uh, executing the uh, dam rehabilitation at all the six dams under drip 2 now earlier it was drip 1 at that point in time we had uh, done for five of the projects so there is a lot of opportunity for the private players as well as the government companies to come and share with us on the different uh, trends and the activities which we are doing uh, on the dams, barrages, uh, civil part as well as the hydromechanical part, the RMU of the projects and the upcoming new projects. Fantastic. And I uh, love the difference between the youngest and the oldest project you just mentioned. <laughs> so uh, asking uh, you in the end about uh, Gail's uh, vision that how are like the, uh, like there is a whole uh, big discussion about climate change sustainability and uh, what is what is specifically like Gail is uh, looking at uh, contributing in that direction. Well, we've already allocated a budget of about five thousand to six thousand crores, and uh, we are going in a big way. As I said, we are going for hydrogen. Uh, in you know government wants about 5000 um, cbg units for which gale has been made as a moderator and we are facilitating all the cbg producers the compressed biogas producers so that this gas which is produced from the agricultural waste etc is supplied to all cgds and we are uh, acting as uh, moderator and aggregators uh, you know, for taking this gas from compressed biogas from the CBG producers to be supplied to all the city gas uh, companies. Uh, and uh, as I said, in renewables, uh, you know, some units are already in place and we are going to set up more as far as the wind and solar power is concerned. In addition to that, uh, there is a mechanism which has been in place, which we call it as a Satat scheme. Uh, wherein uh, some price mechanisms have been made now. Uh, as you said in the earlier presentations, this was a topic, this was the talk that yes, uh, we need to work on all the regulatory frameworks and the pricing mechanisms, etc. So that all these things become attractive. And that's what uh, we are doing. We are working out these mechanisms with the government and making these schemes so that these are successful. Some of the uh, you know CBG plants have already come in and uh, we have already signed, I think, more than 24, 25 agreements uh, uh, already with the CBG producers. And the city gas companies are also now coming up uh, with, with this scheme in place. Fantastic. And I think uh, we will uh, uh, end this session here uh, with the permission of all. And if like, there are uh, any questions from any of the audience, you can just raise your hand or we can conclude here. So if not, I think we can end it here and I will request Garima to uh, take over. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. And uh, may I request, sir, only to you to present uh, a small token of appreciation to our panelists here. Can we have the mementos on stage? Thank you, Mr. Pankaj Kulshestra, Executive Director, Uttarakhand Jal Vidyut Nigam Limited, for your presence here. Ladies and gentlemen, round of applause for Mr. Pankaj Kulshestra. Thank you, Mr. Kamal Tandon, Executive Director, Western Region, Gale India Limited. Thank you so much, sir, for your time and your presence. Thank you so much. Can we have a group photograph, please? <laughs>